Personal notice. Danger's my stock and trade. If the job's too tough for you to handle, you got a job for me, George Valentine. Write full details. Standard Oil Company of California invites you to Let George Do It. In a moment, we'll begin tonight's adventure of George Valentine. You know, there are eight good reasons why Chevron Supreme gasoline works better in any car. And those eight reasons are Chevron Supreme's eight high-performance qualities. Quick starting, fast warm-up, full power, area blending, anti-knock, Vapor lock prevention, smooth acceleration, and economy mileage. Remember that you get the gas with all eight when you fill up with Chevron Supreme gasoline. So stop in tomorrow for a tank full at any standard station or independent Chevron gas station where they say, and mean, we take better care of your car. Sabotage, a transcribed adventure of George Valentine. Dear Mr. Valentine, how would you like to do three things? See a bit of the world, solve the situation for me, and be of service to your country. On second thought, the order of those three things should be reversed. In any case, if you're available for such an assignment at your regular fee plus expenses... Please call on me as soon as possible at the above address. Yours very truly, Miles Carter, President. Hmm, very interesting, Brooksy. I'm sort of a yen to see some more of the world. Oh, so have I, George. Uh, how do you know you're included in? Oh, well, I don't, but you ought to be able to fix it. Uh-huh. Miles Carter, President, huh? President of what? Oh, let's see. Acme Mining and Smelting Company. Acme? What? You sure? It says so, right here on this letter here. Well, well, well. I'd best get out there right away and see my client. How do you know he's going to be a client? And why did you Sparks go to the name of the company? Well, it just happens to be a very big and important concern, Angel. Practically has a corner on South American tin. Oh, is that where tin comes from? A good deal of it. And Mr. Carter has run out of stuff to make tin cans with, wants you to discover another mine or something. Well, if that were the case, he'd hire an engineer. Then what could this situation be? Uh, I guess the best way to find out is to call on Mr. Carter. Put on your face, Brooksy. Let's go. Valentine, let's start out with three facts. Yeah, okay, Mr. Carter. But let's get to the best. First, a quarter of the world's tin supply comes from Bolivia in South America. Second, American interests control four-fifths of that output. And third, Acme imports more tin from South America than any other country. Uh, that's quite true, Miss Brooks, but that isn't the third point. Oh, I'm sorry I interrupted. Well, that's all right. The third point is where you come in, Valentine. Okay, let's have it. In the last few months, Acme's tin production has been steadily slowing up. The mines are just as productive, but we're not getting the metal out. I see. And uh, just how can I do anything about that? There's some kind of sabotage going on at the mines. I believe there's a definite and well-organized plot to slow us up. And that means slowing up the defense program. Well, uh, just a minute, Mr. Carter. Isn't this a job for some kind of government agency? No. The people at the bottom of this plot have planned things very carefully. They could smell a government man a mile away. I need somebody who will be completely unsuspected. But wouldn't these people suspect... Anybody? Not the way I have it set up. Uh, Valentine, have you ever taken pictures? Well, uh, yeah, sure. Of course, I'm not an expert. But you I don't just... have to be, as long as you can be a convincing photographer. I, uh, I rather thought you might be interested in the job, Valentine, so I took the trouble to get this for you. Here. Hmm. Oh, official news photographer, accredited to staff of Events Magazine. But uh, That's your what... entree. The editor of events is cooperating with me in this thing. Oh, yeah, yeah, I see. I'm to go down to your mines in Bolivia as a photographer and check into this sabotage thing. Uh, you mean he has to go alone, Mr. Carter? That's right. No, no. Now, wait a minute. You've given me an idea. I have? Huh? Yes. Of course, I should have thought of it. If Events Magazine needs pictures of the Bolivian tin mines, it also needs a story to go with them. Uh, can you write, Miss Brooks? <laughs> Brooksy, oh, yes, I think Mr. you. Oh, Carter. I was assistant editor of my school paper. Good deal. Oh, I'll wait. get you certified by events, too. 
A photographer and a feature right. Have a look. That'll dress up our investigation so nobody will know. Oh, thank you, Mr. Carter. There's a Pan Am clipper leaving for La Paz tomorrow morning. Have a look, don't you? I'll make reservations for you both. That is, if you want the assignment. Oh, yeah, sure. We'll be glad to go. Good. And just remember one thing. You look like a photographer and a reporter, but your job is to stop a bad case of sabotage. George? Yeah, Angel? The Acme office is supposed to be in this block somewhere, isn't it? That's right. There aren't any signs. How will we know when we come to it? I guess it's an old Bolivian custom, Brooksy. Don't put up signs. Let them guess. Well, I suppose we could ask somebody. Yeah, sure, I suppose so. How's your Spanish? <laughs> well, it's a little on the Mexican side. Hola, but we have... you got a camera, huh? Uh, yeah, yeah, that's right. And you speak English. So perhaps you could tell hey, us senor, how... Senor, you, you take my picture? Huh? Uh, yeah, sure, maybe. But I'm looking for... I, the... uh, I got a friend who is manager in the office of Acme Mines. He's right here, this building. You could take my picture there, huh? The Acme... Well, yeah, I suppose I could. Then you will come with me, Mr. Valentine, and Miss Brooks. Oh, hey, now, wait a minute. How do you know... We were expecting you, Mr. Valentine. I saw you when you got off the plane. I was worried that you might get lost. Yeah. Well, since you know so much, where can I find a man by the name of Ed Burke? Oh, that's easy. Senor Burke is the manager of the Carter Mines in Bolivia. I'll take you to him. George, do you think... I'm trying to... This thing looks a little screwy to me, but we'll go along with the gag. I beg your pardon, senor. I am not a gag, whatever that is. I am Jose. Okay, Jose. Just take us to Ed Burke. Now, just one thing before we get down to business, Burke. Yeah. What's with this uh, Jose character? The little Bolivian who brought you here? Yeah. <laughs> Oh, Jose is all right. He does odd jobs for us around here. What sort of odd jobs, Mr. Burke? Oh, a little of everything. Drives cars, carries messages back and forth between here and the mines. He's a freelance pilot. Good one, too. Has his own plane. I see. Matter of fact, we've been using him as a sort of spy lately. When we go up to the mines, they always seem to know we're coming. Everything's set up for us. But when Jose goes up there... Well, he doesn't actually work for the company, so they'd never suspect him. Has he found out anything about this sabotage? Hasn't been able to tell us a thing. That's why Mr. Carter sent you down here. And uh, where are we supposed to start, Mr. Burke? I don't know exactly. I do know we've got a problem as of right now. Oh, what's that? Several days ago, a train loaded with ore left the mines a couple of hundred miles up in the mountains bound for Antofagasta. Well, that's on the coast, isn't it? That's right, our shipping point. The train was due there two days ago. It never arrived. But you must know what happened to it. We haven't the least idea. It just disappeared into thin air. We know it left the Lolania mine. That's all. Well, who was manning it? Anybody you suspect? Not at all. Both railroad men from the States. But who's in charge of these mines? That's where I think the trouble lies. The top men at both Lolania and Unsi are Germans. But East Germans. You know where their sympathies lie. Yeah, sure. With Russia, of course. But if they're the ones who are responsible for these slow-ups, why not fire them? That sounds easy, Valentine. But these men have been in Bolivia a long time. They're under long-term contracts with big penalties if they're fired. Oh, I see. Besides which, we can't prove anything. Uh-huh. Well, seems to me the first thing to do right now is to find that missing train. That's right. It's stalled somewhere along the way, and nothing else can get through. Okay, let's start from there. You say this, Jose, is a good pilot? Oh, yes. Very good. Well, then, suppose we have him take me over the railroad route between here and the mines. Trains don't just vanish, you know. Jose will be very happy to take Senor Valentine. My plane is already there. Well, well, well. You seem to be handy all the time, Jose. Si, sí. si, sí, senor. Maybe a little too handy. Como? Eh, what, senor? Skip it. Can we fly up to the mines and back before dark, Jose? Si, sí. If we leave at once... I'm all ready to go, George. Uh-uh, Angel. Next trip. I'm just going to do a little scouting this time. But I'd like to go. Valentine is right, Miss Brooks. He'd better go alone with Jose this trip. Next time up, he can take you. Well, all right. I'll go back to the hotel and wait for you, darling. Yeah, okay. And if you find anything on the way, Valentine, please let me know at once. All right, but how? Jose has a radio in his plane. I have a receiver and transmitter right here in the office. Call me as soon as you see anything. Right. 
Come on, Jose. Let's go warm up that plane of yours and get going. Seen anything in that train yet, Jose? No, senor, nothing. Well, it's pretty hard to see from this altitude. Can't you come down a little? Oh, no, no. The wind currents over these mountain passes, they're very bad. Oh, yeah, sure. Hey, how many cars were there on that train? I think there were seven. Seven, huh? Well, that should be easy enough to spot even from this height. That is, if it's still on the tracks. See, si, if it is still on the tracks. Hey, hey, wait a minute. Tip your starboard wing a little. See? Si. Yeah. Yeah, there's the train, all right. Yeah. Where are we? Yeah, about a hundred miles back from the border of Chile. Okay, good. Give me that radio transmitter. See anybody around the train? No. No, senor. You see, the train has run off the tracks. It's against the canyon wall. There is no... Hello, hello. Valentine in flight calling Burke at La Paz. Come in, La Paz. Are you there, Burke? Yes, yes, Valentine. I've been waiting to hear from you. Found anything? Over. Yeah, we spotted your ore train, all right. Derailed and heeled over against a canyon wall. About a hundred miles from the Chilean border. Over. Look like a bad wreck? Not too bad. Guess a wrecking crew could take care of it. Okay. I'll send a work train up right away. Senor! Senor Valentine! Yeah, what is it, Jose? Something has happened. The gas is leaking. Well, now, how could that happen? I felt a jolt. Like somebody shooting at us from below. Maybe shots hit the gas tank. Well, can't you do something? No, no. There's nothing to do. We must land. Are you sure we had plenty of gas when we started out? See, si, see, si, the tanks were full, senor. We must land. All right, we'll look for a place. Burke, Burke, are you still there? Yes, yes, Valentine. I heard you say... Wow, that was close. What was close? Somebody is shooting at us, Burke. Hit our gas tank. We got to come down. But, good Lord, Valentine, in that country... I know, I know. That's what I'm worrying about. Find a place to land, Jose. I think so. If I'm careful... That plateau. Okay, head for it. What's that, Valentine? What'd you say? Just talking to Jose. Now listen, Burke, get this. Yes, yes. Jose thinks he can land on a plateau. We'll make our way up the canyon to the wreck. All right, I'll send the train. Yeah, we can sure use it, all right. If we ever manage to land this crate. In just a moment, we'll return to tonight's adventure of George Valentine. Say, don't forget the new low price on Atlas tires being made as a special offer by independent Chevron gas stations and standard stations. If you need tires or tubes, now is the time to buy. Famous for their rugged, long-lasting service, Atlas tires put plenty of rubber on the road. Their wide, flat treads give better traction and help you to stop quicker. And now, you can buy Atlas tires at a special low price for a limited time only. With Atlas Tires, you get the added protection of the written Atlas warranty that's honored by 38,000 dealers from coast to coast. You get a liberal trade-in allowance and easy budget terms. You can purchase your Atlas Tires at the special low price and charge them on your new Chevron National Credit Card with Chevromatic. Every motorist knows the proven performance and dependability of Atlas Tires. And now is your chance to get these tires at an outstanding savings. Then you can be sure that you're riding on the safest, surest tires that money can buy. Better stop in tomorrow at your standard station or independent Chevron gas station and get complete details on the new reduced prices on Atlas tires and tubes. It's just one more reason why they say and mean we take better care of your car. Now, back to tonight's adventure of George Valentine. You're engaged by the head of a large tin mining company to try and discover the source of sabotage in the company's Bolivian mines. Before you can even get to the workings, the plane in which you're flying is shot down over the wreck of an ore train. If your name is George Valentine, it's a mighty pleasant feeling when you step out of the bullet riddled plane on solid ground. And when, a couple of days later, you jump off the work train back in the park. Hi, Bruxy. It's a long time you got back here. I don't suppose you realize I've been worried to death. I'm sorry. I couldn't let you know, Angel. The telegraph lines were down. I know, but... Hello, Valentine. We got word you'd be in about now, so we came down to meet you. You got word? How? The telegraph line has been back in operation all day, darling, just in case you didn't know. Oh, no, I didn't. 
Then I suppose you know the ore train is just a little bit behind us. Fred. Yes, that word came down the line, too. Tell me, what did you find up there at the wreck? Well, it's a clear case of sabotage. One rail had been taken out completely, spikes and all. Uh-huh. You see, we've been trying to work on the idea of sabotage at the mines. And they probably outguessed us. They figured the best thing to do was to keep the stuff from getting through. Yeah, that's about it. Then what we have to do is to check on the mines again. But we tried that. Not with a news photographer from Events Magazine. Oh, yeah. I see what you mean. And a reporter from the same magazine. Oh, no, Angel. This is man-type stuff. When do you figure you can get the ore train unloaded and start it back for Lalania and Uncia, Mr. Burke? Oh, you could be ready to head back up tomorrow night? Good, good. I'm going to be on it, complete with camera. So am I, complete with paper and pencil. Oh, no, I told you. Oh, this... now, don't be so old-fashioned, George. Look, will you Remember, pre... there are a lot of good women reporters in the business. Yes, but and I... And I happen to work for events, too. Might be a little dangerous, Miss Brooks, especially if they should get on to who you are. Hey, they see. won't. Come on, George, you must be hungry. Yeah. Okay, Brooksy, okay, you win. Well, keep us posted, Burke, and I'll be on that ore train when it heads back up into the Andes. George? I mean, we will. But, George, this can't be the Lalanya Mine. No? Look at that sign over there in big letters. But Mr. Burke said this is one of the biggest of them, and there's nothing going on around here. Yeah, I know. Probably another phony strike or something. Oh, what are we going to do? Well, you're going to act like a very able magazine reporter. And I hope you didn't forget your camera. Here comes somebody. I see. Hello there. I beg your pardon, sir. Yeah? I did not see you get off the train. Who are you? Well, my name is Valentine. A photographer for Events Magazine back in the States. Uh Uh-huh. And uh, this is Miss Brooks, reporter from the same magazine. We'd like to see the manager here. I am the manager. My name is Miller. What is you want? Oh, I'm sorry. Well, you'd like to see our credentials, I guess. Here are mine. Look, see? What? Oh, yes, George. And here are mine. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, let's see. You were sent by the company? Uh, You mean Acme? Well, uh, no, no. We we had to argue pretty hard, even though we had letters of introduction. But they finally let us get on the train. Uh Uh-huh. I see. Yeah, it doesn't look like we're going to get much of a story here, though, does it? Why? What do you mean? Well, I mean, nothing's happening. What is this, a holiday? Oh, that? No, no, no. It's too bad you cannot see us in operation, but you see, yesterday, one of our machines, one of our most important machines, got out of order. There were parts broken. But don't you have any extra parts? These parts? Unfortunately, no. I have ordered them from La Paz. They should be in within a few days. Uh Uh-huh. Well, now, this doesn't help us much for the story and pictures for our magazine. No, no, I suppose not, but uh, there's nothing I can do. No, 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 of course not. You see, we'd planned to do quite a layout on both the Lalania and Uncia Mar. Oh, yeah, well, maybe it's better you go back to La Paz and wait until we are again in operation. Oh, better still, George. Why can't we go right on up to the Uncia Mine? That train's going to pull out any minute. Hey, yeah, that's right. Mr. Valentine, for your good and the safety of the lady... I do not believe it would be wise for you to go on to Uncia at this time. Oh, why not, Muller? The natives who are working in the mines, they are threatening to strike at any moment. There may be violence. Well, that would make an even bigger story and maybe some good action pictures, George. Oh, yeah, but I don't like the idea of your being up there. There's going to be trouble. You're quite right, Mr. Valentine. I'm a newspaper woman, George. If anything happens up there, I'm going to cover it. Yeah. Well, we've come this far. I guess we'd better get the whole story. Well, we'll cover your workings when you're in operation again, Mo. Yeah, do that. Very well. George, what do you think about him? I think he's one of our saboteurs. But I can't just figure a way to pin anything on him. Uh, maybe we'll have better luck up at Uncia. Yeah, and maybe not. But at least we can try. Come on, Brooksy. Let's be sure we're on that train when it pulls out. <laughs> George, there's plenty of activity up here at Uncia, all right. Doesn't look like any slowdown. That's right. I just had a talk with Schmidt. He's the top foreman. Another East German, huh? Yeah, but very friendly. He may not be mixed up in this sabotage business at all. So what do we do? Take pictures? Have to, I guess, for the moment. But it... Oh, Oh, what was that? I jumped a mile. Must be the whistle that ends work for the day. See, the men are leaving the buildings over there. 
But this is early afternoon. Why would they be quitting now? I don't know, Angel, but we'll soon find out. Here comes Schmidt now. We'll ask him. He doesn't look like a very pleasant character to me. Well, these babies fool you sometime. Oh, uh, Schmidt. Yeah? Ah, here's Valentine. Say, uh, what's going on here? Why are you closing down? Do you always stop work so early? Uh, no, but you see, yesterday I worked some men overtime, so we have a load for the train. It's so worn out. They cannot work some more today. Oh, I see, I see. Well, that, uh, that sort of spoils our pictures again. Yeah, I am so sorry. Uh, maybe you'll go back to La Paz and wait until we are working full force again, huh? You mean you won't be working for a few days? Is that is right. The train is loaded. We always give the men a few days off. Hmm. Then I guess we're out of luck. Yeah. Now, you pardon me, sir. Some man over there I must see. The train will be leaving soon. Yeah. Yeah, okay, Mr. Schmidt. George, what struck you all of a sudden? Hey, I just got to look at that man Schmidt has to see, Brooksy, right over there. Well, why would that... Oh, why, that's Mueller from down at Lalania. That's right. But how did he get up here? He didn't come on the train. Probably in that plane that landed a few minutes ago. Something's up, Angel. Like what? Like they suspect anybody who comes up here. My guess is they're getting together for a council of war. Uh, about how to get rid of us? That or something else. Hey, look, they're going in that shack over there. Let's sneak up beside it and see if we can hear anything. Well, all right, That's but... a tool house or something. It's a flimsy-looking thing. We ought to be able to hear something through those walls. George, if they catch us eavesdropping, there's no telling what they'll do. Well, now, careful. Don't make any noise. I won't. I'll get closer. You watch for anybody coming the other way. Yes, George, but be careful. And that's why I had to come here, Schmidt. We have orders. But we have done what we were told to do. We have slowed down supply from the mine. That's not enough. We must stop the supply. That's the only way we can put the American defense work far behind. Shut the town, Miller. If we make them refuse to work? That's not necessary. If the railroad is put out of commission, no tin can be taken out. Yeah, but we tried that before. And they fixed the railroad. Ah, but when we have finished this time, they will not fix it for many weeks. Listen to me. The ore train is loaded and ready to leave for Antofagasta. Yeah, yeah, I know. We have company cars, several of them. They are mountain roads. What are they saying, George? At one point, the road comes very close to the railroad line, do you remember? Yeah, at the Sparrow Pass. Yeah. By leaving now with dynamite and the detonator, one can be well ahead of the train when it reaches that point. And who can we trust to do this? Ourselves, no others. We must do this ourselves. Who knows, Pat? We will be rewarded by the party. Yeah, yeah that's good. Now let us make our preparation. Come on, Brooks. Okay, George. Well, George, what do we do now? Take some pictures. But those men were planning something about wrecking a train, weren't they? Yeah, sure. But they don't know we know about it. They're going to start off on one of the company autos before our train goes back. And? And as soon as they're out of sight, we're going to take another company car and follow them. Oh, well, I suppose you know what you're doing. Just a rough idea, Brooksy, but it might work. Oh, look, George, they're coming out of that tool shed and heading for the car. Yeah, I see. I, uh, I think if I get a shot of the mouth of the mine, it'll be pretty good. Uh, stand over there beside it, will you, Brooksy? Oh, sure, George. Tell me where you want me. Well, uh, right there is good. Yeah, yeah, that's very good. Hold it there. Hello, Valentine. You decided to take your pictures anyway, huh? Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I thought I'd get a few while we're up here. I'm afraid they will not be very interesting without the workers. No, that's true, but, uh, well, we'll come back again for those. Yeah. You are leaving on the old train, of course. Oh, sure, sure. When will it be pulling up? In a very few minutes, sir. Uh, I suggest you get aboard. Yeah, sure, we'll do that, Mr. Schmidt. And, uh, we'll be seeing you. Here's the place, all right, Brooksy. And there's the company car parked up ahead. Yeah, but where are Schmidt and Mueller? Oh, down by the tracks somewhere, I guess. Come on, let's get out. All right. Easy now. I don't see them anywhere. Just take it quiet, like Angel. Don't make any noise any more than you have to. Oh, I won't. Hey, wait a minute. Hey, listen, there comes the train. Yeah, we gotta work fast. What are we gonna do? I, I don't know yet. Just keep your voice down. Hey, duck behind oh. these rocks. What? Did you see something? I thought I heard something over there by the tracks. George, I didn't hear anything. Could it be your imagination? I don't think so, Angel. I don't think so. You can see a lot of track from here. Yeah, sure. That's why they picked this place, I guess. 
train's almost here. No, no, not quite, Angel. You can hear it a long way in these canyons. Won't be long, though. George. Yeah, what? There they are. Uh, They've been hiding behind those rocks, see? Yeah, sure. But wait a minute. They're nowhere near the tracks. Just waiting back here. I wonder... Yeah, sure. What, George? I remember now. They were talking about dynamite and a detonator. They must be all hooked up and ready. You mean they can set it off from here? Sure, that's it. Now, you stay here, Brooksy. What are you going to do? Sneak up as close as I can without attracting their attention and get the drop on them. George, he's holding the plunger on that box. I know, I know. He'll keep quiet and come when I call you. Okay. Turn that box. loose. All right, get away from that box. Murder. It is that bad. I said get away from that box. You're going to meet. Drop that. That's better. And you might reach as high as possible. Come on. You're making a mistake, Valentine. Oh, yeah. I'd rather say you almost made a mistake. Brooksy! Yes, George, I'm coming. You, you, you see, Mr. Valentine, uh, we can explain. You can explain a lot of things later. Brooksy, Schmidt found it smart to drop his gun, see if Bola has one on him. All right, George. But I do not have a gun. I don't carry a gun. Just dynamite, huh? No, he doesn't have a gun, George. Okay, now how fast can you get down that bank onto the tracks? Well, I'll try it and see. What do I do? Flag that ore train, Brooksy. When you get them, stop. Tell them they got four more passengers. Two of them for a one-way trip. When you buy motor oil for your car, you want protection against wear and repair. So listen to the kind of protection a fleet of taxi cabs get by using heavy-duty RPM motor oil. With another oil, they averaged only 35,000 miles between overhauls. Today, using heavy-duty RPM, these same cabs travel 100,000 miles before overhauling. Heavy-duty RPM reduced engine wear and greatly increased the time between overhauls. There's your proof that heavy-duty RPM motor oil offers top protection and top economy of operation, the kind you want in your car. So get heavy-duty RPM at any independent Chevron gas station or standard station where they say, and mean, we take better care of your car. George... What will they do with those men, Schmidt and Mueller? Oh, stick them in jail for a while. Sabotage, attempted murder, stuff like that there. Uh Uh-huh. And when they get out? Mm, I don't know. Fire them back to East Germany, I guess. That's where they belong. Mm Mm-hmm. George? Yeah, Angel? Can you really use that camera? Hmm? Well, sure, sure. Then will you explain it to somebody so they can take our picture? Maybe with the, your arm around me, with the uh, harbor in the background. Oh, I I couldn't let anyone else use it, Angel. And besides, uh, I don't think Events Magazine would take that kind of a shot. Oh, George. <laughs> Tonight's transcribed adventure of George Valentine has been brought to you by Standard Oil Company of California on behalf of independent Chevron gas stations and standard stations throughout the West. Robert Daly is starred as George with Virginia Gregg as Brooksy. Let George Do It was written by Lloyd London and directed by Kenneth Webb. Ted DeCorsia was heard as Carter, Tony Barrett as Jose, James Nusser as Burke, and Fritz Feld as Muller. The music is composed and presented by Gaylord Carter, your announcer, John Heaston. Listen again next week, same time, same station, to Let George Do It. Let George Do It is heard overseas through the worldwide facilities of the Armed Forces Radio Service. This is the Mutual Don Lee Broadcasting System. (laughs) 